And Guy, your take on the quarter. Well, reacceleration in paid ads is good. I mean, 7.5, 7.6 is much higher than I think the 4.6 the street was looking for. So if that's your only metric, mm -hmm. it's a great quarter. There are other mm -hmm. metrics, unfortunately, and one of them is going to become valuation. So I don't know what happened on the EPS side. I'm not going to get crazy about that, but the guide is not great. And we sat here and we've been saying for a while, probably trends up to 340, and you pull the ripcord if and when it gets there. Well, here we are at 340. I don't think there's all that much left in the tank. And that's not to say go out and short uh, Netflix with two hands, not at all. I think you do a back and fill here. I think this quarter was good, not good enough to basically, in my mind, compensate for the valuations that are now probably in line, might be a little bit rich compared to the broader market. I think you sell it on this bounce. I mean, the subs, that was a stunning number. This is something that they have not done since the beginning of the pandemic in terms of ads. Well, it's almost as stunning as, as the sub pullbacks that we saw, you know, a year ago that, that knocked the stock. Uh, we know that would happen to the stock. And, and the things that I heard that I thought were the most interesting were a uh, sustained free cash flow going forward, re resuming, return of the buyback. I mean, this is a company that among the streaming peers uh, is, is the only one that's, that's actually profitable. It's the only one that's generating free cash flow. And for Netflix, for a while, that was really the big issue, too. Big debt load, big dynamics, content spend. Um, but at a time when people felt like for streamers, there is no way out. There actually is a way out here. And I do think that they've shown that tonight. Yeah, you, you're right. They are the only one that's profitable. And I'm like, I am going to kind of drill down and go a little bit crazy about the about the earnings here and the net numbers, because ultimately we're, we're chalking this up to a one off non cash charge related to FX. But you can't have it both ways. Either when the dollar is strong, you can't say, oh, that's only because of dollar denominated debt or, or you know, um, revenues reached overseas. And then now that it's a headwind, you, you can't say that it, that it doesn't work in your favor. So for me, it's got to be you've got to take it the good with the bad in terms of uh, in terms of the FX there. And then I don't really know what I'm supposed to be focused on. Am I supposed to be focused on sub growth, which they have removed no, because they're not going to give it. Well, OK, well, then <laughs> then then I don't see what all the hoopla is about then. Right. If you look at revenues and you look at earnings, I think they're, you know, they're in line. Again, they are profitable. But if we are supposed to be taking our eye off of the subscriber growth ball and moving it to the revenue and profitability ball, I think that ball is a lot smaller than that sub growth number. Yeah, I mean, it, it's great that they Very had ironic. this, right? That they had this <laughs> I mean, great it's... number, but too bad, folks, you won't hear that number again from this day forward, Steve Grasso, in terms of guidance. <laughs> Yeah, so, so the problem is that's what's going to add to the level of volatility that you're going to get on, on days where they report. And when you look at the stock after they reported, the volatility we saw, that's what you're going to see going forward if they don't give us any guidance. Because to Bonowin's, uh, to Bonowin's take on this, people, investors, institutions don't care about anything. As Guy said, he didn't want to drill down because investors don't care right now. Investors care about one thing, sub growth. Can they continue to invest and to grow subscribers? That's it right now. Now, the trade, if you look at it, if you see the gap back from April on earnings, the stock gap down dramatically. So in order to close that gap, it has to trade at 351 and change. It tried to close that gap post earnings, Melissa. So it leads me to believe there's a little more in the tank to climb that that level back to the 350 area, so you but the fact on. that Reed's gone, mm -hmm. and and by the way, he's not really gone. He's the executive chairman, so he's still there. I think that people have to digest the fact that he is still there, and you'll see this market ratchet back up to that 340, 350 area. Still a little left in the tank.